If you ever find yourself at Northwest High School in Scioto County, chances are you'll meet Jake Porter. It may take some time at first because Jake seems to blend in quite easily with the other students. All right, Jake. But you'll soon figure out that this is one very special young man. In kindergarten, Jake was diagnosed with chromosomal fragile X, the number one form of inherited mental retardation. He didn't have a lot of friends and he was really closed down. But he started connecting with a boy who um, football was his life. And um, he wanted Jake to get to do that with him. <laughs> so I was like, oh, no, you, you know, you got to be kidding. It wasn't a joke, and the Northwest football players didn't see it as a joke either. Head coach Dave France welcomed Jake onto the squad three years ago, and he's never doubted the decision to make him an official member of the Mohawks. Jake and I, you know, we're, we're pretty close buddies, you know, and he's fun to be around. You know, a lot of people think I do things for him, but he does more for me than I do for him. Even though Jake was a member of the team, he never participated in contact drills. His condition wouldn't allow it. So the final game of the season against Waverly would be the last time Jake, a senior halfback, would ever be on the sidelines as a player in full gear. We met our traditional film exchange, and um, Coach France was like, you know, Coach, if, if the game is you know, out of hand or if you have control or whatever, we will have to get Jake in the game. Boy, he said, let him get him in the game to, to take a knee. He said he would love to get in the game. I said, well, I don't have a problem with that. You know, I said, I'd be fine. Before the game, Coach DeWitt had a chance to meet Jake. And as he has done so many times in the past, Jake made a big impression on him. As the game was coming to a close, Waverly was well in control, winning 42 to nothing. Coach France called a timeout and then called Jake's number. Coach DeWitt had other plans. No, I said, let's let him score. He was like, you got a shutout. I said, Coach, it don't matter. I said, we haven't shut anybody out all year anyway. I said, I said, but it does, I said, the shutout. It doesn't, it's not important. I think some people in the stands may have thought we were arguing because he comes running over and he's pointing at me saying, you know, let him score. We're going to let him score, coach. So I go in the huddle, you know, and I tell the kids, I said, he's not taking a knee, boys. He's going to the house. I could feel the stir and I'm like, oh, he's going to take a knee. So um, he started to take a knee, then he stood up and he started to go run. And I'm like, oh, no, you know, he's messed his play up. And then it just went crazy. Everybody was cheering, whole crowd was cheering, and all the crowd was, all the crowd was cheering. All the crowd was cheering, the car and heart talked out at me. I, I bought off to that one play. But this is why I do what I do, because, um, you know, because I love young people, and to try to make a difference in someone's life, this is awesome. On a cool, crisp night at a high school football stadium in southern Ohio, compassion beat out competition. When you get the news of your child having a handicap as this, um, you know, you don't even realize all the dreams you have already for them. And it's just everything's rather shattered. And then you pick up from there, but yeah, you know, you dream new dreams, but never could you picture really as good as it's going to be. Thanks to two special coaches and one courageous kid, Thank you guys. dreams do come true. For 10 TV Eyewitness Sports, I'm Ryan Miller. Wasn't a dry eye in the house on that field that day. <clears throat> Not a dry one no. here either. Great story. The Buckeyes hope to make their special fans dream come true this season. Do the work.